Uh, so much controversy in the Liverpool victory over Nottingham Forest at the City ground. Uh, a conflicting report about what happened with Marinakis. Did he go down the tunnel and have a go at the referee? Did he not go down the tunnel and have, the ref- have a go at the referee? But he was standing in the mouth of the tunnel after the game. And Virgil van Dijk was almost laughing about the fact that the chairman was on the pitch right at the very end. Uh, but it was controversial. There was a debate about it. And, and afterwards, Nuno Espirito Santo, is the Nottingham Forest manager, would not get drawn on it. Come on, please, don't insist on that, please. Please, honestly. Don't insist on that. It will not be good. Please don't insist on that. Let's speak about the game. Let's speak anything about uh, you want. But that will be discussing point for sure during the week. So we've been, we've been speaking over and over again. I hope decisions come better. So let's move forward. OK. Well, he didn't need to speak about it because Nottingham Forest employ a refereeing analyst. And that man is Mark Clattenburg, who obviously refereed in the Premier League for a very long time. And he made himself available in the mix zone after the game and said this. The law is quite clear. The law states that if the referee is going to stop the game, which he's entitled to for a head injury, if he feels that there's a head injury, he's quite rightly allowed to stop the game. However, the ball has to go back to the team that has the possession and Nottingham Forest clearly had that possession. You know, everybody, you can understand the frustration tonight that things just seem to be going against Nottingham Forest Football Club at the moment and we just need to hope that this luck changes in the future. Uh, I haven't spoken to the referee. I'll leave that to the officials of Nottingham Forest to do. The owner's uh, quite upset because they fought. You know, he's invested a lot of money in the football club and he wants to see results. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the wise and Shut wherefores. Up, Clattenburg. All right, well, first of all, let me <laughs> ask you a question. This is, this, isn't this clever from Nottingham Forest? Isn't this clever? They can basically say Possibly. what they want about referees Possibly. from a position of strength because they've got an ex-referee in their yeah, employ who I can mean, stand there as a mouthpiece and say it and no one can get in trouble about no, it. No, we've seen this increase in the usage of intelligence surrounding referees. We've got the accusations made against Barcelona for their payment to certain indiv- ind- influential people in the refereeing fraternity. For advice. For advice, for information, for statistics. To, to, you know statistics around refereeing performances. Then you've seen the situation in Roma, where Jose Mourinho had uh, referee advisors. So it's not a new phenomenon. The fact that Clattenburg is a little lickspittle sycophant going out and saying things that probably he would hate to have heard said about him if he was refereeing a game because a mistake has been made. He was no, just d- quoting the law, right? Well, he's quoting the law. What, he said, what was wrong with p- what he said? Decisions are made and mistakes happen. And we understand, as a former owner... I think it's preposterous to have somebody come out there and, and start talking about the owner's perspective on this situation because the owner mm. takes the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. He, he, he puts himself in the way of a situation. There's no way an owner should be on the side of a pitch. Whether I agree with the principle or the fact that people should be held accountable for mistakes is a different dynamic. We've seen what happens. We've seen that fellow go on a pitch in Turkey and start kicking yeah. a referee. Mm. You know, you need to. We need to get the yeah. balance right between that, referees that, that being held incident, accountable. Uh, involving Ankara Gucci, I think, and Rizzo Sport earlier in the yeah. season, where they, he got punched in the face to the referee by well, the owner yeah. of the football. I'm not club. suggesting Maranekas was anywhere near that territory, but listen. That that's not his domain and he shouldn't be anywhere near it and he doesn't need to be anywhere near it and he's making it about his frustrations. That goes with the territory. You have to live with it. I had mm-hmm. situations at Palace where goals were scored by my team against Bristol City in a, in a significantly important league game for getting, trying to get promoted to the <coughs> Premier League. We score a goal. Freddie Sears scores a goal. Hits the back of the net. Hits the standing behind the goal. We get a goal kick. They get a goal kick. You have to get on with it. Yeah, I was fed up and got a real go to the Bristol City chairman but that was my place in the ballroom did you did you ever confront a referee did you ever go down to the pitch no, and, and, no. and get involved no, in I mean, I discussions wrote, I, wrote, I was writing a column for the Observer at the time and I wrote an article about refereeing standards and, and I, the, the FA intervened and fined me 10,000 quid um, and end, ended up having a real battle with them so you but, sent someone an email no, no, I didn't send someone an email. I wrote a letter, I wrote an article. I had the pen. I had the pen and I utilised it. Passive aggressive that time. I, 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 I do think that there's a place and a space. And if you start, you can't, if you right. move into that space now, Absolutely you're going right, to open yeah. the door to people like you to turn around and say, mm. oh, it's an interfering chairman. It's a chairman that's got too much to say for himself. Next he'll be in the dress room. Next he'll be mm. this. Next he'll be that. Next he'll be the other. I thought the manager handled it well. Mm. I ain't going here. But can he handle it well? Because they've employed a consultant who can come out and say what he wants. Well, that's what he's there for, isn't he? Clannenberg. Mm. But listen, Simon's absolutely spot on. The chairman, director of football, whoever it may be, so he stays upstairs. I, 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 as a manager, wouldn't want an owner keep coming downstairs. I wouldn't want to see my owner on the football pitch, you know. Undermines the manager. It, it undermining the manager. If there's an issue on the football pitch, it's down to the players, the manager to deal with. Okay. Not, not, not Clattenburg, not the owner. That's as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so let's go mm. back and have a look at the incident itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Are you of the opinion that actually there is a major miscarriage of justice here? Uh, not particularly. I mean, I was obviously, uh, you know, you're like Stato, so you have this sort of information regularly available to you and don't spend your own time, time in your bedroom, your pants around your ankle, reading rule books, right? So I ask you for the information. Right? I don't think, I think, it's a, I think it's an unfortunate set of circumstances, but there's a lot to have happened between that moment and that individual error and Nottingham Forest conceding a goal. I think it's a tragedy for them. They deserve to get something out of that game, but they might want to look at some of the defending in terms of the circumstances that involve getting the goal, you know, allowing McAllister to put the ball back in the box. Ooh. I do think it's unfortunate. I do think it's a tiny matter of timing. If the referee had awarded the, 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 the transgression at mm. the time instantaneously, it would have been what it was. Yeah. I mean, there, there were two opportunities, later. actually. He could have awarded a free kick against Ryan Yates for a high foot, which was a, a possibility. Yeah. He, he, if he had blown a couple of seconds earlier mm. and the ball was inside the penalty area, <clears> then the drop ball mm. for the goalkeeper would have been the right decision. But because the action was happening outside the box and Nottingham Forest were in possession, he should have handed the ball back there. That was an infraction, but it was 1 minute 56 this, this, between this is, this is that moment point. and the goal. This is my point. Did it not change the momentum? You, in fact, listen, you can go back in any moment in, in a game and say, no, well, Simon got fouled 15 minutes ago. If we'd have given it, it would have changed the momentum of the game. And he would have wrote an article about no, it. No, but what I'm saying, and this is what I'm saying, so yeah, it, Paul Tinney got it wrong. He got it wrong. But, 1 minute 58 seconds, Liverpool go and score. Me as a manager... I'll be totally frustrated. The owner's gone mad. Stephen Ridge got sent off. Me looking at that game, I'll be saying to myself and I'll be saying to my players, when the ball came out of the box, why was Aroni and Hudson Odoi trying to dribble out of the box? All right, game management, kick it clear. Then the McCallister thing doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Then you don't lose the game. You pick up a point. That's what I'll be saying as a manager. Yes, there's been a misjustice. I get that. Referees do make mistakes. They keep. They will continue to make mistakes. We're talking one minute fifty-eight seconds. Feel for the Forest fans. They're in the preparers' position at the moment. It's tough down there. Uh, but this isn't one incident. John Nottingham mm. Forest fans says this, and we've had Adam as well on this subject as well, texting us in eight ten eighty nine. You can do that. Uh, this mm. isn't one incident. Forest have been on the end of way too many bad calls just in the last seven matches. Forest have been uh, had the following sh sh shocking decisions. Bournemouth at home, down to 10 men after two scandalous yellows for Bolly. We lost 3-2. Newcastle, 100% a one-year penalty, not given at 1-1. It was a penalty as well. It should have been given in that game. They lost 3-2 in that match. West Ham, 100% Williams penalty, not given. We won 2-0. Uh, Brentford away. Tony Cheats moving the free kick two yards. We lost 3-2. That did happen, Hang but right, you'd so, still so question the goalkeeper. Because moved two yards and they lost 3-2. Yeah, there, there, there was, there, there's more questions there, fair. but it is... It is, it is something that's going on and on and on and on. No, and no, Clattenburg did, I, did say it. Yeah, he said know, it. He said it in that clip. These things are going that. against Bolton no, Forest. He's just mentioned two or three things. One, someone got sent off and they still won Seven the game. Seven things he's mentioned. Well, but two of them that he's mentioned. One, they got they, a man got sent off and they won 2-0. Two of the kids have moved the ball two yards and they lost 3-0. Can you understand why the owner's I'm, upset, though? I'm, I, I, I'm sure. Listen, I'm sure. Yeah, if, you, if you asked any team in the Premier League or even in the EFL League to name seven events that happens during the season I'm sure they could tell you he got sent off he shouldn't have got sent off he should have gone the balancing argument is mm. how many decisions have Nottingham Forest got in their favour yeah. that have mm. been dubious because what people will do is only give you the credit column or the debit column yeah. they won't give you the credit column because it advances their argument Correct. there will be decisions that have been mm. made that Nottingham but, but Forest but is pushing into this argument He's f he, he is fueling the narrative well, that things well, are going well, against well, them well, and well, by being there well, he's, he's fueling the narrative but if he doesn't then he doesn't have a job does he so ultimately, mm. he's, you know, he's creating opportunities. So are they right to do so? I suppose that's the question. Oh three seven one seven double two double three double four. Or is it fueling conspiracy theories? Liverpool and uh, Nottingham Forest fans uh, would love to hear from you on what you think about it. Oh three seven one seven double two double three double four. I do feel as if I've been mischaracterised a little bit about seeing there in my pants with them down my ankles <laughs> reading the rule book when we all know for sure that in football the book is. The laws of the game. John is a Nottingham Forest fan. Matthew is too. Gentlemen, uh, welcome to the programme. John, we'll start with you. What do you want to say? Hi. Hey, Sam. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on, by the way. <clears throat> Appreciate you reading out the list I put on the text, by the way, Sam. It's, um, I, th I think the thing is, it, it seems to be a culmination of, of, of bad decisions in the last sort of few months, especially. I mean, just to answer Simon's point about, you know, you get some for you, some don't. I'll give him one. Burnley should never have had a goal disallowed against us at the start of the season. I'll give him that. But that against seven or eight decisions against us in key moments. I mean, it's not it's not just the odd thing. We're talking about game changing moments here. And I know I agree at some point saying, look, you know, you've got to defend better. But here's an example. If the referee has got the laws of the game wrong, not not a subjective decision. This is law. Next game, let the same team kick off both halves. 
doesn't matter then, does it? Two kickoffs, let them kick, kick off. But how, you, how are you going to police that? Because Nottingham Forest might not be no, in the, no, the, the no, league no, next no, year no, against Sam, Liverpool, the so they can't is, do that. But if you do it Sam, against another is, team, then another team gets penalised. No, Sam, the point is it's ludicrous. What I'm saying is, if that was given, if, if somebody accidentally gave the kickoff to the to the same team and they went down and scored. You can't then blame the defenders for not defending. So, so, so tell me what you're the saying, John. Tell, tell, me, tell me what you're saying. Are you, are you suggesting that there's some sort of weird agenda against Nottingham no, Forest? Not and at that, all. Or, no, or, not, or, no, or no, the no. referees just aren't good enough? No. Which, which, one, which no. one is it? Right, not at all. I, I can't quote Darren Fletcher, but Darren Fletcher made a really good point at a podcast earlier this week. The E said it's not about consistency, it's competency. And I think he nailed it. I think we're talking about a lack of competency in a lot of referees. It's not a not a not a scandal. It's not a some kind of conspiracy. We've just got individuals who are simply not good enough at their job and don't even know the laws they're trying to um, adhere on the pitch. But the fact is, these things are going to possibly put in aside the points possible deductions. We could get relegated because of these decisions. Then there's millions of pounds. These people lose their jobs. <laughs> It, it, it's, it's scandalous that a referee doesn't know the laws of the game that he's on the pitch. Well, well, that, to, to John, 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 that's not true, is it? He does know the laws of the game. Mm. He just applied them wrong. He made a mistake, and that is going to happen. A bit like, you know, Callum hudson Adoy <laughs> made a mistake when he decided to dribble out the box. I mean, mm. people do no, make no, no. mistakes over he the course of he, games. He obviously, do, he obviously doesn't know the laws of the game, otherwise he wouldn't have given that decision. <laughs> Do you, what, what do you think the answer is here? Do you because do you, because John's sort of painting a picture of a, a terrible scenario where referees are given so many decisions against Nottingham Forest, it's actually going to cost them in the league. You've been a manager, you know mm -hmm. what it's like to be in that situation where you feel like the world is against you mm -hmm. and that decisions are going against you. Where do you lay the blame? Do you do you lash out? Do you think it's referees? Do you think that there's a big problem with referees? Because for for time immemorial, we've been moaning about them. Mm. Listen, I, I listen, I I I I, I, I hear his frustration. You know, I, I do. I also believe that if you look at every team in the, in the in the Premier League, even in the Championship, when I was at Reading, the amount of mistakes that referee get 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 they get wrong. But that is going to be part and parcel of the game. Everyone but but you made mistakes, didn't you? Oh, of course, I made loads of mistakes. I saw some made loads of mistakes. Okay, but I think because of the timing of the situation, the ten games left, and so they're, they're, they've worried about the, the deduction mm. of points. It's the, it's the timing. As I said, every team can go through, well, we should have had this, we should have had that. The referee got that wrong. You know, was it subjective? Was it objective? All these things that people are throwing about. Now's the business part of the season. And this is where the Forest fans are now feel that they're aggrieved. All I will say to you, and, I, and listen, I'm on the Forest side, but there was one minute 58 seconds after before Liverpool scored the goal. Mm. And they I'll should say. have dealt with it better. That's they what you're should saying. have dealt with it better. Uh, you can understand why Nottingham Forest mm. fans are frustrated because so. they, they, mm. they had a brilliant record against Liverpool. They hadn't lost at home at the City Ground against them since 1984. It seemed to be a place that Liverpool struggled to go to uh, prior to the weekend. They got a goal right at the very end with the last touch of the game. Matthew's a Nottingham Forest fan. He's upset about it as well. And uh, what do you want to say to Simon Jordan and to Paul Lintz this morning? Yeah, first off, first off, a great show, lads. Absolutely love the show. Simon, great book. I read it last year in Morocco. Absolutely loved it. Best football book I've ever read. Oh, very kind, and, mate. Um, Thank you. Must uh, have been a long yeah, no, to, start, to start with, I want, to, <laughs> I want to start with the VAR, but I'm just going back to the 1 minute 58 second thing. But if we'd have got the ball back in that corner like we should have, we might have got a free kick, we might have got a corner, a throw in. We'll get to the, up the park, game's over, we draw the game nil nil. That, that was it. That's it's just the time of the timing of it. I think um, is, is a big thing. Really, a minute, a minute or so later, could have stayed down in that end. Ball gets cleared. That's it. Finished. Um, but but there were other mistakes off. too, weren't there? there were, it wasn't just that one. There was a mistake, and there's, no one is denying the fact that Paul Tierney has made a mistake. Hands up. Yeah. Everyone's seen mm. it. We all know the laws of the game, and, and that was a mistake by him. Yeah, but there were brilliant. other issues after that, weren't there? You know, you, you can say that it wouldn't have gone up the other end, but down, well, it might not have gone down that end. But it might have done. They shouldn't have had the corner. Yeah. They shouldn't have had the corner. A minute later, they might not have got a corner. But like I say, back to the VAR decisions. Okay, Paul Tierney's got that wrong. He puts his hand up for it. A few years ago, we'd be talking now on a Monday about that one referee making the wrong decision. We're now talking about five referees getting decisions wrong in the VAR room. Every week, it's like, it's not just the guy on the pitch anymore. It's the five referees or however many there is in the VAR room. One of them could say, Paul, got that wrong, mate. We go They're not allowed to do that, though. I mean, that might well, be a problem with IFAB protocol. We might all be annoyed yeah. about the fact that he can't well, do it, that, but he's not allowed to. But that's back to like, but, but again, I think with VAR, it's there for um, decisions that the, the referees got wrong. If he's, if they've seen that in that 
in that room. And, and we, we come back to offsides, we come back to fouls a bit later on in the game in the build-up. I know they're to goals, but it wouldn't have been a problem to come back 30 seconds and say, that should have been a forest ball. Same with the Willy Bolly one. I know we don't go on to second yellow cards, but it was that wrong. He'd actually won the ball, and, and then he's ended up with a yellow card. I, I totally agree dropped. with you, but, that, but, we, but what we're doing now is we're judging them by a set of uh, protocols and laws that, don't, uh, that aren't available to them. They, you know, you're, you're asking them to do stuff that they're not supposed to do, so you can't judge them by that criteria. Um, but I understand where you're coming from, and I, listen, I, I genuinely hope that, that Nottingham Forest recalibrate and manage to get themselves over the line. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.